On my kicker tonight, I pay a personal tribute to a colleague, friend, and mentor, the late cameraman Johnson Barraza. On Tuesday night, Johnson Barraza, a cameraman working with the South African Broadcasting Corporation, SABC, succumbed to a heart attack at his home here in Nairobi. And tonight, I mourn not just the death of a colleague, but of a person who greatly impacted both my professional as well as personal life as a television journalist. Let me start by saying a career in television journalism is an exacting team sport through and through. It is not a career for solo runners or corporate loners. Every task, including this kicker, is a team relay race. The diligent combination of the pace of individuals and the goals of a team, the swift passing of the button and the collective joy of the team at the crossing of the finish line. Johnson Barraza personified the best of selfless television teamwork. My journey with Johnson Barraza began on a sunny morning at Highway Secondary School here in Nairobi. I had just joined KTN as a trainee reporter and I was sent to cover a function at the school. Now, for those familiar with television news terminologies, that little appearance reporters make in their stories is called a piece to camera, or its short form, PTC. It normally comes either at the beginning, middle, or mostly as it happens, end of the story. A PTC is short. It actually lasts just a few seconds. But the first ever piece to camera is every TV journalist's worst nightmare. A PTC is a reporter's moment on television and facing the cameras for the first time can be a most unnerving experience. And so my moment came at the Highway Secondary School in South Sea, and I rambled and stammered as the camera appeared to make monstrous faces at me. Johnson Barraza patiently observed my meltdown and kept encouraging me to relax and do my lines again. He locked the camera, walked to me, held my shoulders to realign my awkward posture and told me, just ignore the camera and say those lines again. He went back and placed his hand next to the lens of the camera and told me to talk his, to his hand if I was not comfortable with the lens of the camera. After repeating my lines 16 times, I finally got a clean take for a story on a school prize giving day. And with that, Johnson Barraza initiated and thereafter constantly guided me through a steady journey of building confidence in front of news cameras. Three years and two CNN Africa Journalist of the Year awards later, I moved to the South African Broadcasting Corporation, SABC, and it was with great pleasure that I took the opportunity to move with cameraman Johnson Barraza to the SABC. Together, we began a new phase of our careers as continental journalists. On our first assignment at the SABC, we flew to Rwanda for the commemoration of five years since the end of the 1994 genocide. We traveled across Rwanda, visiting the genocide memorial sites, and all the while adjusting to the new, expanded, and shocking horizons. Our shock over the Rwanda genocide was quickly wiped away by the excitement of our first ever physical encounter with liberation icon Nelson Mandela, who had just retired as the first black president of South Africa. With Johnson Barraza, we flew in Mandela's presidential jet from the Waterkloof Air Force Base in Pretoria to Arusha, Tanzania, for the launch of the Burundi peace process negotiations. For four and a half hours, we sat with Mandela in his spacious cabin. He asked Baraza and I about our families and our careers, 
and we asked him about his life and South African politics. With Johnson Baraza, we covered every step of the protracted South Africa mediated peace process to the end of the war in Burundi. We shuttled from Pretoria to Arusha, Dar es Salaam to Bujumbura, and to Gitega and Tibitoke in the interior of Burundi. Then Mandela handed the medi mediator's role to the then Deputy President of South Africa, Jacob Zuma, with whom we shuttled till the signing of the peace deal and installation of a transitional government. Our assignments with the top South African leadership in government were to include travels with President Thabo Mbeki across the African continent, particularly during the transformation of the Organization of African Unity, OAU, into the African Union, AU. Johnson Baraza and I accompanied President Mbeki to summits in Togo, then in Cairo, and finally Addis Ababa, where OAU became the AU. Together with Johnson Baraza, we also covered stories in African war zones. We found ourselves in the thick of the Six Nation War in the Democratic Republic of Congo. In Kisangani, we interviewed rebel leader Professor Wamba Diawamba only for the building we were in to be flattened by rocket fire hours later. We found ourselves in the crossfire of rival Ugandan and Rwandan armies, and we were saved from harm by the army that won that bloody contest. Then we went to Darfur in, South Sudan, in Sudan to look for the infamous ginger weed. And with Baraza, we were excited to meet Kenyan soldiers in peacekeeping missions in Sudan. Together with Johnson Baraza, we headed to war-ravaged Somalia. Our taxis were as unconventional as our hosts were tragically hilarious. A rear wheel came off our car and literally preceded us. Johnson Baraza notified our Somali driver who shrugged it off saying, don't worry, the car will catch up with the wheel. Together with Johnson Baraza, we conducted some momentous interviews. Liberian President Charles Taylor made us a bit nervous, but President Yaya Jami of the Gambia proved even scarier, but it all ended well. We had sad moments covering the independence journey of South Sudan. We were present in Khartoum when Dr. John Garang, leader of SPLA, was sworn in as vice president of Sudan. A month later, Baraza was in Kitale and I was in Kilgoris for the weekend when we heard that a helicopter carrying John Garang was missing in Uganda. Shortly thereafter, we were both in our humans weakest as we witnessed the burial of John Garang in Juba, South Sudan. All in all, it was a most fulfilling journalistic journey across the African continent. But Johnson Baraza was also big and selfless on personal life. He told me almost as a fatherly instruction to construct a house in my rural home. And he provided me with the same architect he used to construct his own home in Kitale. He was that selfless. He advised me not to waste time in life. When things got thick in Congo, with rocket fire booming all over the place, we lay flat on the floor, sheltering at an abandoned building in Simisimi Airport, Kisangani. He peeped from his hideout and with a cheeky grin, asked me to start a family if we survived the war. Ndiyo usikufe kama umbwa, he added. Johnson Baraza was humorous. When the first COVID-related death happened in Kenya last month, we spoke and he reminded me of a story we covered in his village of birth, Kimalewa, Bungoma County. Baraza joked that maybe his village self-proclaimed God, Jehovah Wanyonyi, could have tackled coronavirus. But you see, Jehovah Wanyonyi himself 
died long ago. We laughed with Johnson Baraza. It turned out for the last time. Rest in peace, my dear friend. Rest in peace, Johnson. <laughs>